Hi, my name's Tony Sakaguchi, and I'm an instructor here at the Culinary Institute of America at Greystone. And today I'm going to demonstrate how to prepare a variety of maki sushi rolls. When preparing sushi, the selection of rice is of the utmost importance. Because if you look at sushi, it's about 80% rice to about 20% fish, seafood, or vegetables. In front of me, we have two types of rice. We have a U.S. medium grain rice, which is primarily used for sushi in the United States. Okay, and then over here, we have a short grain U.S. rice, and this one is primarily used in Japan for sushi. When you look at rice, what you're looking for is a nice, translucent luster, kind of a mother of a pearl glow to it on both of these. So let's rinse the rice. We're going to take it to the sink, and we're going to fill it with water. And the primary thing is that you're very gentle. You always kind of want to lightly circulate, and what you're trying to do is wash off any of the starch that's come off the grain by sitting, when it was sitting in the bag and kind of rubbing it against each other. Okay, some more water. And we'll do this about five or six times until the um, water runs clear. And in terms of soaking the rice, it's really important to soak it so that it rehydrates all the way through. And that way, when you combine it with the water, on um, the cool water, it will start cooking together rather than having partially soaked rice, which is going to cook more quickly on the outside, yet the interior is still going to be a little bit firm and chalky. And so sushi is generally prepared with cooked rice that you're going to cool and put a vinegar syrup on it that has vinegar and sugar and salt and sometimes a little bit of kombu, which is a sea kelp. First we're going to do, take the kombu and just slightly score it just so that it can release some of its flavor. So in the pot, what I have is the rice wine vinegar, about one cup, half a cup of sugar, and about two and a half tablespoons of sea salt or kosher salt, and then also one piece of the kombu. Okay? And we have this on very low heat, and it's, we're going to let it sit and stir it until everything dissolves and the kombu becomes very tender. Okay, but the primary thing, like I had said, is you don't want to boil it because the kombu will take over the flavor in the dish. Okay. I have a colander lined with a piece of cheesecloth just because I don't want it, the, any of the rice to fall through the holes. So I have six cups of rice and six cups of water. I'm going to lift up my cheesecloth and gently drop my rice into it, into the rice cooker. Now, we'll get our tub, and what we're going to do is use a cedar tub here called a hangiri. And um, we have a little paddle here, a wooden paddle. And generally, you want to soak this in water to rehydrate the wood and also your paddle, too. So these have been soaked early, and they've just been kind of waiting. But I'm wet my paddle one more time. I also have a fan here because the most important thing about doing the rice is that as you put it into the container, you want to cool it as quickly as you can. And traditionally, you would use a fan. Um, and generally, you'd have two people working on it. But, you know... In terms of industry-wise, you're not going to stand here with a fan like this. So most likely you'll have some sort of floor fan or electric fan, which we have here. Okay? So turn that on. Okay. And so now what we'll do is take the rice. It's got a chance to sit. The towel has absorbed the extra moisture. And we lightly fluff it just to kind of separate the grains. Okay. Beautiful. We're going to take this. I'm going to pour it into our tub. Okay. Okay, and you want to be gentle as you remove it from the tub, from the rice cooker, because you don't want to mush your grains. And then we're going to take our room temp or cool syrup and ladle that over very gently. Okay, now for the syrup, I have my fan here just kind of blowing. I'll take the syrup. I'm going to just pour it down the back of my paddle just to kind of distribute evenly. I don't want to pour it directly on any area. I want it to kind of drizzle over. Okay. And the key thing, like I said, you want this to cool as quickly as you can because if it takes, if you don't fan it, the rice is going to continue to cook and will start to overcook. As you're stirring the rice, you always use wood. You don't want to use metal. Rubber spatulas are fine too, but definitely not something metal because that will cut your grains and also give you more of a mushy texture. And what we're really trying to do is cut through the grains, just kind of lightly pushing them out of the way so they can absorb the syrup, but also cool. So we're making little channels through here. 
This will also help you break up the lumps, but generally you're just trying to cool it down and move it. And we're going to continue to do this until the rice is totally cool. Sometimes the rice can be lukewarm or, or room temperature, but you never serve it cold and you never refrigerate it once you've made it. You make it and you use it. We're going to take our piece of nori and you're going to lay it down on the mat at the end closest towards you so it's lined up with the edge. And what you can do is use that as your guide as you're rolling forward. And with the U.S. medium grain rice, the main thing is you have these nice individual grains. You don't want to mash it, so you would kind of gently put it on here. You wet your hands so that it doesn't stick, but you don't want to have so much water that you drip it onto the nori sheet. And then also you take your cucumbers. You're going to line these up right next to the mushroom. You're going to take a piece of asparagus, put a little bit on here also. You're going to take your thumbs behind the mat, put your fingers on top, and roll, gently roll forward so you're just on the other side of the ingredients, okay? And you should end up with a little bit of rice on the outside, see? So you can see the ingredients are folded over. You got a little strip of rice down here. And then what I'm gonna do, tighten this up, lift this mat up, roll forward the rest of the way, just to the edge, and then slightly tighten it, okay? And what this does is compact your roll, okay? Because we have the rice on there very light and loose, and now what we're trying to do is compact it slightly. You have this strip right here, which will seal it, you can put a tiny bit of water, but you don't want to have too much because then it really makes the nori chewy. Okay, and you're rolling up the rest of the way. And then you can kind of round it out just using your mat. So now we're going to cut some more vegetables for our sushi. And what I have is a mandolin, Japanese mandolin. Many things are extremely sharp, so you can either wear gloves or just remember that they're really sharp. Okay, so watch your hands. We have a cucumber that's peeled, and what I want to do is end up with a long strip. So I'm going to hold it flat. I have a towel to slightly elevate it. I'm just going to lay this down and slice it as thin as I can. So what we're going to do for this is just do a piece of tuna that's enclosed in a little bit in some rice, and we're going to put a piece of plastic on this mat first. Okay. Wet your hands. Gently grab the rice. And a very... This rice is really beautiful. And if you look at this rice, you can see how the grains are still, you can see they look like individual grains of rice, even though they've been handled through the syrup and then also from putting them onto the mat. But if you look, they're definitely individual grains, which is perfect. Okay, put our strips of tuna down the middle here. Okay, and then we're just gonna roll this around the rice. All this rice around the tuna. Okay, so we have a little tube. All right, we're going to take our carrots and our cucumbers and cut them into thin strips and alternate them across this mat on a slight diagonal like this. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we have our mat lined up. What we'll do is we'll take our roll of tuna and rice, we'll lay that in the center, and we're going to enclose it in these vegetables and then trim the edges. Take this, roll this around. Okay, and then there's your tuna roll that's enclosed in the uh, vegetable wrap. Okay, and then the next roll I was going to do is an inside-out roll in terms of that we'll have the nori sheet on the inside and we'll have the sesame seeds on the outside with the rice. So what we do is you take a nori sheet, you know, a toasted one, you're going to fold it in half. Like and then cut it. Now what we're going to do is take this and we're going to put shiny side down. We're going to wet our hands and we're going to take a little bit more rice. And this one we're just going to put rice on the outside. Okay, so we're going to put it down on here. And always being really gentle. You're just kind of press, you know, not even pushing on it. You're just kind of smoothing it out over your nori. 
Okay, so very thin layer. And it's okay if you see some of the, the um, nori on the outside. I'm going to flip this over. Okay, and I'm going to put a little extra down here as kind of my insurance <laughs> so that I can seal it. And if I don't need it, then I just wipe it off. But if I need it, it's there for me. Okay, now ingredient-wise in here, what I have is some um, saute shiitake mushrooms with a little bit of ginger and sesame and some scallions in there. I have some uh, julienne shiso, which is these leaves right here. Um, they have a slight anise flavor to them, but they're quite delicious. And then I also have some tamago or some egg crepe. And so this is an egg mixture of a, uh, beaten eggs with some mirin and some soy sauce and salt in it. And then you make these thin crepes and you roll them in the pan forward so you end up with a block. And then you cut the block into pieces like this. You can eat this um, in sushi. You can have a big block and have it on top of the sushi. Uh, you can eat it as a snack. Okay, but anyway, so that's what we have for our ingredients. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did last time. We're going to lay our ingredients down the center of the mat. Okay, about an inch in from the back. I'm going to trim that off just a hair so that it fits. I'm going to take my mushrooms. And these I'm not going to fill nearly as much because my, roll, my nori sheet is so much smaller. Okay, that down here. Okay, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of avocado in here also. Okay. Oops. And a nice green color. And then, let's see, a tiny bit of the shiso. And use the mat as your guide. Put your fingers on top and roll to the other side of the filling which will take you almost to the edge of the nori sheet, okay? Roll forward the rest of the way to enclose and then kind of lightly shape. Okay, so it should look like this, where you don't see any of the nori sheet and the filling is totally enclosed. And then, because it's difficult to eat like this where it's only um, rice, what you're going to do is take some sesame seeds that are toasted and kind of sprinkle this over the rice roll, okay? So usually I'll sprinkle because if I roll it in here, it just gets too heavily coated. And these are just toasted white and black sesame seeds. You can also do it with Tobiko if you want to or the flying fish roe for a nice orange color. Okay, we'll put a tiny bit more over here. Okay, and then we'll just give this another quick roll. Okay, and that's your inside out roll. On this one, I always love the way the ends look because they have kind of this tree growing out of the end from the daikon sprouts. So cut that. Stand that up right here. Clean your knife. Cut the next one. Okay, and so here we have our finished plate. We have our accompaniments of ginger, wasabi, and soy sauce. And here's a beautiful platter of sushi maki rolls using U.S. medium grain rice.